Hello folks, welcome to the next episode of Physics GRE. My name is Rev Bari, I'm a Brown University Physics grad student. Today we're taking a look at another classical mechanics problem from the Physics GRE. The Physics GRE is the admissions exam for physics PhD programs here in the US. So let's go ahead and get started with the problem. Here's the problem. So we have a soccer ball and we kick it at some angle theta with some initial velocity v and we'd like to figure out what angle theta do we have to kick the ball so that it has a horizontal range of d okay so that is the question the question is find what angle theta gives you a range uh, given an initial velocity v gives you a range of d okay so let's get started with this problem this is a fairly uh, typical kinematics problem. We just have to write down the kinematics equation. So let me just write down all four kinematics equations. Vf is Vi plus At. D is Vit plus one half At squared. Vf squared is Vi squared plus 2At. And the average velocity is just the average of the initial and final velocities. So. If we look at these four equations, which one is going to help us find the range most directly in terms of the angle theta and the initial velocity v? Well, we can start with this range equation, d is vit plus half at squared. Okay, let's apply this equation to the x direction. So in the x direction, I have dx is equal to vix t plus one half ax t squared. Now, there is no acceleration in the x direction, so this term is just zero. And so I'm just left with Vixt. But what is Vixt? Well, I can find it from here. If I have an initial velocity of v and an angle of theta, then my Vx, my initial velocity in the horizontal, let me write it nicely, is going to be v cosine theta. And while we're at it, we can write down Vy as well. That'll be v sine theta. So now, here I can write down that the horizontal range dx is v cosine theta times t. So now we just have to find t. How long does the ball spend in the air? To find t, we can look at some of the other kinematics equations. So let's see which equation has t. Certainly this third equation does not have t in it, so this one is not uh, relevant. This last equation for the average velocity also does not have time. Looks like the only equation that involves time other than the second one is Vf is Vi plus At. So now if I go ahead and solve for time here, what do I get? I get Vf minus Vi over A. So now let's apply this to the y direction because it's the y velocity that determines the air time of the ball. So if I apply this in the y direction, I have Vfy minus Viy over A sub y. Now what is our initial and final point that we're going to be considering? Well, it's easiest if we, let's draw the ball's trajectory here. Here's the ball's parabolic trajectory. So the ball's initial y velocity, remember, vy initial is just v, let me, I, I'd like to write it more nicely. Let's give myself some room here. So v sub y is v sine theta initially, but once the ball reaches its max side, then of course v sub y is zero because it's a turning point. So that is, that's going to be our final point. This is going to be our initial point. So if we plug this into our formula, we'll get just half the air time, right? Because this is half of the ball's full trajectory. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now if I go ahead and go through the motions, let's go ahead and do that. So where's my equation? So this is going to be Vfy. That's going to be zero at the max altitude. And Viy is going to be V sine theta v sine theta divided by a sub y now the acceleration in the y direction is just g so this is the air time of the ball or is it this is the air time for half of the ball's trajectory so now to get the full air time t we just need to double this so we get 2 v sine theta over g okay so you can see that the air time is completely determined by the y velocity and we just have to double it to get the air time for the full trajectory instead of the half trajectory and you can see if we were on a heavier planet like Jupiter, the air time would be reduced because gravity would be stronger. So now we can plug in the time that we calculated over here uh, for t. So let me go ahead and do that. So d sub x 
is going to be v cosine theta times 2v sine theta divided by g so that our horizontal range where is my eraser so our horizontal range is as follows we just have dx is equal to 2 v squared sine theta cosine theta over g now if you remember your trigonometric identities then 2 sine theta cosine theta okay what is that if not sine 2 theta okay so our horizontal range is v squared sine 2 theta over g but remember we have to solve for theta in terms of v and d um, because we'd like to know what theta helps us achieve a range of d so let's go ahead and do that so if i just solve for theta over here what do i get so let's multiply both sides by g and divide by v squared so i'll get dg over v squared is equal to sine 2 theta so that theta is one half arc sine of g d over v squared okay so this is the angle theta which helps our ball achieve a range of d okay so let's go ahead and quickly recap what steps i did to, to, uh, to solve this problem so the first thing i did was i wrote down the four kinematics equations and then i focused on the horizontal range equation this equation and i just wrote this equation down in the x direction meaning it has no acceleration term here so if i write down the range equation then i have dx is vix times t but t is determined by the y velocity so to figure out the air time of the ball i needed the other kinematic equation this one vf is vi plus at and so i got t is equal to 2 v sine theta over g the 2 comes from doubling the half of the trajectory right because T uh, without the two would give us the air time for half the trajectory from this initial point to the max altitude. For the full trajectory, it's two v sine theta over g. Plug that back in here for the time, and we get two v squared sine theta cosine theta over g for the range. And then two sine theta cosine theta is simply via trigonometric rules sine two theta. And then we simply solved for theta as a function of the range and the velocity. So now let's just do a quick sanity check and make sure this makes sense. So if we have a greater range, what does that do to our theta? Well, you would think that theta would just increase, right? If you had a greater, if you were required to hit a greater range, but that's not necessarily the case because a higher theta does not necessarily mean a greater range, right? Because the max range is achieved for theta is pi over two or 45 degrees, okay? So if you're starting from below 45 degrees and going up to 45 degrees, then your range will increase. In other words, D, uh, let's call the range D, capital D. So D, D theta is going to be greater than zero if you start from theta is less than pi over two. But if you're starting from theta is greater than pi over two and then you increase your angle for the, uh, for the ball's initial velocity, okay if theta is greater than pi over 2 then the the range of the ball will actually decrease because you've already crossed the 45 degree max range point right so this uh the change in how d changes theta is actually not very trivial right it depends on where you're starting from under pi over 2 or over pi over 2. what what about a v squared now that one seems to be uh, pretty straightforward if we increase v squared we see that this argument decreases and so arc sine of this decreases and so it seems like if you have a greater v squared then um, then uh, theta will change as expected okay so thank you for watching this episode of uh, the physics gre lecture and we'll see you in the next one if you have any questions or comments leave them down below